Hi, it's Neil Shawnee Hill on your entertainment news. I'm with a man that really doesn't need any introduction, of course. He's the golden voice of radio, and that's the title of his brand new exclusive book. Remember, though, David? Yes, remember, Neil. If you miss it, you miss out. Don't miss David today on your entertainment news. Radio 1 David, lovely to finally meet you at last. We never get enough time on these things, but I've got to bring in, you did um, a successful pantomime uh, at one of my favourite venues, the Bratford Alarm. Oh, Brand. lovely. Uh, tell me the Ken Dodd story. Right. My, after working with Ken Dodd on Doddy's Music Box and getting the nickname yeah. Diddy David. I always wondered where that came from. Yeah. Now I get it, the Diddy men. Doddy, yeah, yeah. well, I was, his, I was his straight man or his interviewer, if you like. Yeah. And uh, during rehearsals, he called me Diddy David. <laughs> And he took me to, to one side afterwards and he said to me, in fairness to him, he said, do you mind me calling you that? He said, because if you mind, I won't do it anymore. He said, but if you don't mind, I think it'll stick. Yeah. And I said, I don't mind and I've been stuck with it now for 50 years. Yeah. So there you are. Anyway, after Dottie's Music Box, I got my first pantomime. You're absolutely right, Bradford Alhambra. I was playing Buttons in Cinderella. And Ken Dodd turns up one day at, uh, after the matinee and comes backstage and says, come on, I'm taking you out for dinner. So Ken was known to be, what, what should we say? Cautious. Cautious. <laughs> that's a good word. Cautious. Yeah. So I thought, well, that's very nice. Yeah. Anyway, we go across the road to Gold Sachs Fish and Chip Parlour. <laughs> we go into, it's, it's unlicensed, we go into the back parlour. He takes off his overcoat, takes two bottles of lager out of his overcoat pocket, puts them down on the counter and says, cotton chips twice, love. So we sit there, we have cotton chips, we have a swig of lager, and he gives me money, advice, not money, yeah. he gives me money. I said money again. Yeah, right. I've got money on the mind with Ken Dodd. <laughs> it's because he hadn't paid you. Ken Dodd. <laughs> he gives me advice that money can't buy. Yeah, yeah. And he, Ken was a wonderful buttons. Yeah. And he said to me, he said, you've got the bubbly bit You've got to work on the pathos. He said, you've got to remember, Cinderella is a cow. He said, she's only running off with the prince because he's loaded. He's got loads of money. Yeah. She really loves you. You're the little page boy and she really loves you. And you've got to work on the pathos. And he gave me advice on how to do that. So the next day, I thought to myself, I thought, well, Ken and I could have gone to the best hotel in Bradford. We could have gone to Yates's wine bar, couldn't yeah, we? Yeah. And we could have had a slap up meal. We could have talked about football on holidays. Instead of which, we went to the fish and chip shop, we had cotton chips, we had lager, and he's given me this priceless advice, so I've got to work on it. So anyway, a couple of nights later, I'm doing the kitchen scene where I sing Smile to Cinderella. Smile, though your heart is aching. Charlie Chaplin song. And normally, after I sang it to her, that's when she ran off with the prince. You know? <laughs> On this particular night, I'm walking off to the wings, and a little boy in the front row shouts out, Cinders! Marry Buttons. So I got on the phone to Ken. He said, well done, son. He said, you're on your way. Wow. And that is lovely, isn't it? Because, yeah. and that proves why he's successful, because he studied it. You know, I think a lot of people go into Panto and they get the script and they just, they just do it. But it is um, a, a very uh, skilled genre, I think, to get kids on your side. You know, you well, it is, and he was brilliant. Not easy. And I'll tell you, tell you a couple of other stories uh, about Ken. As you know, this year he got his knighthood. Yeah. And um, I've been doing a, t a tour, theatre tour, David Hamilton's Rock and Roll Back the Years. One of the, I, sometimes I do a little gag or two about Ken, working with him. Anyway, I came off stage and the stage manager said to me, he said, we had Ken here in our theatre recently. I said, yeah. He said, what time do you think the audience went home? I said, tell me. He said, half past two in the morning. Now he's just had, you know, November, his 90th birthday. So I rang him up and I said, Congratulations, Ken. He said, well, he said, I'm going into politics now. I said, really, as what? He said, Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> he, you have to laugh at Ken, though, because he did turn that whole episode into just, as only he can, 
cracking humour. He know? says, so he says in his act, he says, I'm not worried about the tax man. He said, I'm fully paid up to 1973. Yeah, I mean, and it's true. He said, you know? I can remember the days when income tax was two pence in the pound. Yeah. I thought it still was. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, that, you know, that's an art lesson as well as when, when you, you know, we all have problems in, in your, your career. And he, I wondered how he would get out of that. Because you wonder, as a comedian, you know, you think, how is that going to bounce out? Well, he had a wonderful, he had a wonderful QC, George. Yeah. Carmen and yeah. George Carmen famously said um, a lot of accountants are comedians but no comedians are accountants which yeah. is a terrific line and true and, and, and true yeah. but I learned a lot of things working with Ken um, he said to me uh, we did two series of Doddy's Music Box went out on ITV on Saturday nights one in 67 one in 68 and he often used these words he said listen and learn and one of the things that I learned from him is that he always had time for people. Yeah. And people would come backstage, they'd go to his dressing room, but he could be there till one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning. He would be there signing autographs yeah. and talking to people until the last one had gone and then finally he would go home. Yeah. And you know, it's those lessons that you learn. And I think I started in the business when, you know, there was a lot to be learned from old pros. Yeah.